What's up guys and welcome back to the Realistic Career Mode with Rex and this is episode number 41. Before we get into it, I just want to say a huge, huge thank you for the amazing reaction episode 40 got. The rounding off of season 2 and the League 1 playoffs. Um, the video like it blew up and it was really, really sick to see. So many great comments, uh, which we'll go through some of them today in this episode. Um, but yeah, it's just it's really, really wicked when you, know, you produce some, uh, some form of content and to see it being taken well and people enjoying it is it means a lot so thank you massively and hopefully uh hopefully that continues so going into today's episode we're going to be prepping for our first season in the championship as we looked at the table there Wrexham in the championship for the first time cannot wait for this one we go through the board objectives uh, the main ones, uh, youth, if they want us to sign a youth player and um, this season and have them play 30% of next season's games. That's a low um, a low target though, so that's not too bad. A brand exposure target. Now this is a high target, so this is an important one. They want us to get 10 wins this season, which hopefully we will do. And within two seasons, inc increase the team's experience level by getting the average age of the team up to 28. Now it's currently 25. That well, it might cause me some issues because there's actually a few of the older players I was looking to get rid of, but we're going to have to bring in some experience now to get that age, average age up. In the domestic uh, targets, they want us to finish mid-table, so I was hoping maybe survive, but I still think we're going to be in a relegation scrap, but they want us to finish mid-table and get to the last 16 in the FA Cup, by the way. That's a low target, though, and then the other high target is the financial one. Within the same season, sign one crucial player and make £4.25 million profit. So now we've seen the uh, board's objectives for the upcoming season. Let me know in the comments which ones you think we can achieve, which ones you think might be the ones we struggle with. Obviously, the higher targets are the ones we want to focus on. Um, but yeah, they're the high high priority um, for the financial and the brand exposure, that is for sure. As we see the budget here, 8.2 million. It's, it's okay. It's not the best, though. It's quite a shoestring budget going into the championship. So it's going to be interesting to see what we do with that. We're going to have to get creative. And actually seeing the board here, they said that they actually doubled our um, what our budget was. It was 4.1 million. They doubled it to 8.2, which is kind of crazy. I'm not going to lie. Um, yeah, so uh, 8.2 million. We're going to have to get creative with that one. Perhaps sell some players as Rory Baker, the goalkeeper, leaves on loan to Burton for two years. And, of course, Carlos ba uh, Belaber's loan has expired. Two years we had him on loan. Two separate loan deals. We're going to try and bring him in again. As you guys uh, commented last episode, you wanted us to bring him in. It might be a bit tougher this season. Now he's getting more established and he's going to be in a Brian side that probably want to you know, bring him into the first team now. He's 21 years old, 74 rated, worth $8 million. So that alone is our entire budget. So... The labour is going to be a tough one. It might be we might have to sell some players to potentially bring him in. We we can try and bring him on loan, but who knows? Before we look at that, though, one thing I want you to let me know in the comments right now. Do you think we should turn off the handballs for this season and going forward? Because we, I always have it off, but I've seen some people use it on. And I know it's very overpowered, but it, it kind of is realistic because in real life, I feel like with VAR, there's so many crazy handball calls these days so let me know if you if you want me to maybe i'll test it out for a few games maybe turn it on for a season let me know in the comments should we put handballs on for this season well going through the squads uh now and as you can see james's comment here um he speaks about bennett uh which we will touch on in a minute but looking at nathan lloyd uh james said that he doesn't think nathan lloyd should be our number one goalkeeper this season if we're going to be in a rele relegation scrap a newly turned 17 year old only 64 rated it might it just be too much for his uh for his young shoulders and i tend to agree with james there so james thank you for that comment I do have my eye on a goalkeeper already. You'll see who we're looking to get in later on in the episode. Alex Smithies could be the experienced head, but he already wants out. He's up for transfer and at 35 years old, I'm happy to move him on. And then uh, James also mentioned about potentially selling Jewison Bennett, who is, um, he's a superstar man, 21 years old. He went up six ratings last uh, season, up to 75. He is our most value, uh, highest valued player at 6.5 million. So I'm sure I could get a higher than that as well. So if we were to sell Jewison, we would have, you know, maybe looking at 14 to 20 million. Perhaps then we could bring in Belaber. That might be something we want to do. I personally want to keep hold of Bennett. I think that he is a star, you know, 75 rated. He's the highest rated player. 
And the back end of last season, I know his stats weren't fantastic, but the back end of last season, he really grew into his own and I was really noticing him in a lot of games. So we'll see as we run through the squads and uh, through the higher valued players, as uh, Ian said here, we might have to sell some of our higher valued players to bring in some better players. It's going to be a tough one. Um, <clears throat> Ian also mentioned that there might be a few players that just might not be at the championship level now, including the likes of George Evans, um, Jacob Mendy at left back and Elliot Lee in cam. Now, my plan was um, George Evans. I think I'm going to replace him with Koulibaly this season. I think Evans might be out of his depth. Mendy, I know he's 65 rated, but he's just so good. And that left back role, so good attacking. I think I'm going to try and play him. Um, I'm going to start him this season and see how he goes. But we might bring in a, a different left back. because I don't think Matty Foles is a good enough backup. And then Elliot Lee... 30 years old now, 67 rated. It, it, it's a tough one with Lee. I do love this player and he is a Wrexham legend. But again, let me know in the comments, guys, what you think we should do with Evans, Lee, Mendy, with Bennett. Do you think we should sell these players? Do you think we should keep hold of them? Let me know your thoughts in the comments because I love reading your guys' comments. I love um, getting you guys in, as, as interacted into the series as possible. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. As we see, would have seen there as well, Cyrus Christie retiring at the end of this season. So we will have to find a replacement right back uh, come the end of the season. But Christie for now, 72 rated. He's been fantastic since coming in uh, from the free agency market. He will be my starting right back. And then another player retiring, Tom Bradshaw, who actually is still out for another six months, did um, did his ACL in the playoff semi-final last season. He's out for another six months and then retiring at the end of the season. As we see a few players, uh, the likes of Chris, well, Christie's retiring, as is Bradshaw, but uh, Barnett, O'Connell, Mullen, all contracts running out at the end of the season. Barnett, I'm probably going to look to sell. I just don't think he's good enough, even as a backup. O'Connell, potentially, I might sell as well. But Mullen, of course, the star boy, he will be staying. We'll be giving him a new bumper package. Although, not that many years because he is... Uh, on the back end of 30 now, so um, that might be something else we need to do as well. We need to bring in a striker. We need to bring in a backup striker because looking at the squad depth here, the first team is not too bad. Attacking-wise, it's okay, but the depth is where we are really, really struggling. We definitely need a backup striker because we don't have anyone. Elliot Lee is going to be question marks over him in the cam spot. And then Ben and Roberts are uh, good as wingers, but our backups, the three Youth Academy graduates, the two Morris brothers and uh, Lloyd Humphreys, I don't think they're good enough at all. In the centre mid role, I, I want to be starting Koulibaly and CDM in replace of Evans, but now Belay has gone back to Brian. We're going to need a, a centre mid replacement who is a more creative spark to suit um, Koulibaly's defensive roles. Christy, like we said, is retiring and Barnett, I think I'm going to look to sell on and bring in a better backup right back. Hayden and Earl, question marks over Hayden as the captain, 67 rated. Josh Earl has been fantastic. Mendy at left back, I am going to try him and then we are going to try and bring in a goalkeeper as well. And then the depth is just not there. The uh, bench is not good at all. So we are definitely going to try and uh, we're going to have to bring in some players because right now that team is not championship worthy it is uh, it's a tide that's going to struggle this season, that is for sure. Well, um, before we bring in any players, we look to list a few players for loan or for sale. Um, Alan Brown, 30 years old, we brought him in on uh, from the free agency market last season, worth 1.3 million. Just haven't really clicked with Brown, and I think that you know it, it could be a, a good little bit of money that we could make from him there. So we put him up for sale, put a couple of the youngsters up for loan, and then... Um, the two Morris brothers, I actually quite like Ryan, but Lee Morris, I just don't think is, he's there, you know, 62 rated. I know he's young, but I need players uh, more established now because we've got more, uh, Lee's brother, Ryan, and then we've also got Lloyd Humphrey. So I think those two will be my sort of youth academy wingers. And then I'm going to look to sell Lee on. Um, I also might, I also put Ryan Barnett up for sale, as we said we would. Matty Folds for now, I'm going to keep it. If we bring in a backup left back, I'll probably put him up for sale. And then a couple of the youngsters are up for loan as well, including Patrick Armstrong. So into the transfer business, into the incomings, Carlos Belaber, the one that everyone wanted. Um, you guys were saying in the comments, I should try and make this deal uh, come through, whether a transfer or a loan. Well, the bad news, guys, we tried to bring him on, on loan and Brighton were not having any of it. They obviously see 
plans for the Cameroon for international to be in their team this season. So Belieber, unless we can whip up some funds, is not going to be repping a Wrexham shirt for the third season in a row, which is it's sad, man. It's really, really sad. So get your um, suggestions in for a Belieber replacement in the comments. Championship experience I'm wanting. Um, and then we spoke about uh, the goalkeeping situation, whether Nathan Lloyd is just, you know, he's not there yet um, to take on a championship relegation fight. So I wanted to bring in an experienced head between the sticks. And this guy looked perfect for me. Where's Fodderingham? Released by Sheffield United in the summer. Um, plenty of Premier League and championship experience. 34 years old. I know that we haven't, um, his scouting report hasn't come back yet. So we don't know what his overall is. It's a little bit of a risk. But I'm confident at his age and his ability that he'll be low 70s at a minimum. And I was worried that um, someone else would snap him up. So I felt like because he was by far the perfect fit for what we could, um, you know, a realistic signing. I just wanted to go in and uh, bring him in. So we offer a Fodderingham, a two year deal, the number one shirt. He will be our starting goalkeeper this coming season. And as we can see here, we replace some of these with Fodderingham, and Fodderingham is 75 rated. Yes, Wes, he becomes our joint highest rated player along with Jewis and Bennett. What a signing that is. I think he's going to be a key, key player as we're going to be battling relegation this season. So welcome, Wes. You have that number one shirt. Now, Koulibaly, we put him on a uh, development plan to turn him into CDM. Um, at the back end of the last season, we now convert him to that role, so he will be taking on that role. And then we get the Welsh uh, scouting report and... Uh, uh, this kid, he actually looked really, really good. Uh, Ryan Richards looks like a decent talent. Looks like it could be a really good centre back. Uh, we give, we promote into the youth academy and then see that he's actually our highest rated overall centre back, seventy two to ninety four potential. Uh, could play centre back, right back, or CDM. But I think with his stats, left footed as well, I'm going to keep him as a centre back. So. Ryan Richards, Welsh centre-back, looks like he could be a decent one. And then we reject a uh, loan off of Patrick Richards. Just not a realistic destination. I think it was from a Chinese club. I want to keep him in England. Now, with the scouts, uh, this was an interesting one. So, Stefan Coulson has another nine months, I think, left on his deal. Um, but Garen says here, we should only send the scouts to the UK and Ireland for now. Keep it more realistic. Once we are an established Premier League side... We can send our scouts abroad to the more exotic countries. But for now, we should keep them local. And uh, I wanted to bring in a better, a higher rated um, scout. So once our um, Welsh scout was done, we actually fired him. And then I was tempted to bring in a five star, five star. But um, I think for 3.4 million, that's you know half our budget. I just didn't want to spend that much. So we bring in Adam Gallagher from Northern Ireland, four-star experience, four-star judgment. I feel like judgment is the key. Judgment is the real key because then you'll get the higher quality player. And I think at the championship level, we need to bring in higher quality. So with um, Stefan Carlson in, scouting in England, we're going to send Adam Gallagher to... Uh, we're going to keep him in Wales for now. And then let me know in the comments, um, our other scout, where should we send them? Should we keep them in Ireland? Should we keep them in Scotland? Where should we send them? Let me know in the comments. As we reject a couple of bids here. Lee Morris, I mean, a couple of big bids for him here, including a million pound offer. So unfortunately, the destinations aren't realistic, but I definitely feel like we can get a million plus for him now, which is really good to see. And then again, Ryan Barnett had, a, had an offer, I think, from Turkey, which was not realistic as much as I obviously want to offload these players. I want to offload them to a realistic destination. So we reject those bids. And then Samuel Mason, um, a promising looking uh, youth academy player, he was a CDM. We converted him to a centre back, and he actually went up four ratings. So that's always key. Make sure you um, check your youth players. Sometimes their stats can look like they're decent, but their rating is low because they're in the wrong position. So um, judge what position you think they should be. I think Samuel Mason. I think his stats really suited a centre back role. We converted him to that, and he went up four ratings straight away to sixty rated. So potentially we'll um, sign him up to the team this year and send him out on loan. But for now, yeah, Samuel Mason in the youth academy looking at promising. As we look at some of our transfer targets, Ivan Cavallero was one that I was going to, it was a sneaky one that I was going to pick up, you know, ex-Wolves winger, Portuguese international, great player, great experience, but he's already been snapped up. So we um, dive back into the free agency market, already picked up Wes Frodingham, and now we're looking at Luke Chambers, the left back who... Um, was on the books at Liverpool until last season. He actually, we actually scouted him last season. Um, I was considering bringing him on loan before we signed Matty Folds instead. 
He looks decent, 21 years old, 68 rated, so he's actually higher rated than Mendy, so I'd, he'll definitely challenge Mendy for that left-back role. But I thought, again, as a free agent, we've already got a scout report on him, so we know what he's like. I think he'll be a good fit, um, and obviously, who doesn't like a free signing? So, uh, Luke Chambers, are welcome to the club. We also offer him higher wages than they wanted. But again, they offered quite low wages, but I want to keep this realistic, so we offer him um, it's still low wages, but higher than they asked for. And then because we brought in Luke Chambers, we put Matty Folds on the transfer uh, transfer list. And then we dip our toes back in the free agency market. You can see a theme here. You know, we only had £8 million budget. We've already spent it, uh, some of it on a scout. We have to be very smart with um, with what we're doing with our money. And guys, don't be afraid to dip into the free agency market. You can find some real gems there and tip players that will really suit your team so do not be afraid to um dip your toes into that free agency market if you want to and we pick up a third player from it alex lowry um again a, a youngster 22 years old 70 rated a release from scotland um he was playing for rangers in the summer but he could be a perfect upgrade uh in the cam spot plenty of play styles as well and room to grow he looks like a real real talent so a four-year deal we offer alex and then we make our fourth sign in here, Will Fish, 22-year-old, 71-rated centre-back uh, on the books of Manchester United, but has been out on loan in Scotland for the last two years with Hibs, now a free agent. Uh, again, Fish looks like another great catch. <laughs> um, sorry, I just couldn't resist. Um, again, it just offers more uh, in that centre-back role. I think potentially he could re uh, replace Hayden, but for now he'll sit on the bench. Um, but I think Will Fish and Josh Earl will make great a great centre back partnership. Um, apparently, we only signed uh, one syllable centre backs now. I'm not sure what that's about. But yeah, again, uh, another few. Uh, I think it was a three year deal we gave him. Uh, again, we're bringing in younger players, which is not what the board wanted us to do. They wanted us to bring in older players, but we're building for the future as well. And I think the likes of Lowry, Fodderingham, uh, Fish and Chambers are great additions. They have experience at this level. They're higher rated and they boost our depth in the squad as well, which just fills me with confidence, to be honest. Now, as we said, obviously, we're not going to be bringing Belaber back to the race course ground this season. So we needed a, a centre mid replacement that's going to play that creative role. Um, Archie Gray was someone that I was looking at. Ex-Leeds player can play centre mid or I think left back, actually. He's been playing for Leeds in real life this season and might be right back, actually. But he's a great talent, although he's on he's at AC Milan at the moment. So I thought, you know, I'll keep him in Milan. He's probably enjoying his football there. Um, but we did go back into the free agency market to pick up our fifth signing and our third um, free agent who was playing in Scotland last season, Rocco Vata. I think I'm pronouncing that. Is it Vata? Vata. I think it's Vata. 20, uh, how was he? 20 years old, 71 rated again bags of potential uh has that special something tag as well um i just think this guy looks like a really really good pickup almost he gives me luke bolton vibes but an upgrade from that so um hopefully he'll give us more than luke bolton did as well obviously we sold luke bolton onto sheffield united um who i think will face this season actually as well so um rocco vata again great depth in the club can play right wing left wing six uh sorry uh, uh 20 years old so he's got bags of room to to um to grow as well so rocco vata welcome to wrexham and uh, that's five uh five free agency uh, signings we've made out so we've improved the squad massively without spending a penny obviously we've spent money on wages but we haven't on transfer fees which is great to see now, with the signing of Will Fish, uh, that means that I think we're a bit overloaded with centre-backs now. So we put Ewan O'Connell up for sale. His contract's also up at the end of the summer. So we might have to accept a cut price deal for him. And uh, Lloyd Humphrey saying that he is happy that we've put him up for loan. Again, because of, we've brought in Vata, I just think that we should probably send him out on loan this season. Because I think Lloyd Humphreys looks like a real, real talent, but he needs some uh, consistent game time to grow. Now, we do get a bid immediately for O'Connell. Again, I think that's from Turkey. So I did consider this one because, you know, some English players do go over to Turkey. But I feel like at 29, perhaps, he probably wants to play for one more club in England before moving abroad. So we do re reject the bid. And then um, Norwich come in with a big bid for Paul Mullen, which, of course, we reject that. Paul Mullen isn't going anywhere. Now, there were a few other suggestions in my mind of players that I wanted to replace Belaba with. Out of, oh, obviously, Archie Gray, we touched on already. He was one of those players. But this 
guy I just felt like was perfect for us. Alfie Devine, the now ex-Tottenham player, plying his trade in France with Lille. Um, had such successful loan deals um, in multiple EFL clubs, including this season. You know, he was at Port Vale and Plymouth in real life. This guy is a real, real talent. I think he slept He slept on a little bit. I think people don't really know about his talents just yet, but he's so versatile, he's so creative. And for his young age, he runs the game so well in centre mid. Says he's a cam here, can also play centre mid. I'm going to... I'm going to... Um, ideally play him as that centre mid next to Koulibaly. I want him to be that creative centre mid outlet. But for um, a real cut price deal of 3 million, which fits our budget perfectly, we pick up Alfie Divine, 20 years old, 70 rated. I think this is going to be an absolute gem. Watch out for Alfie Divine this season. Going to be super, super happy with him, I think. Give him a 11k a week offer, a uh, five-year deal. Give him the biggest contract we could. Very happy with this one. And it's the first signing we've made where we've actually um, spent some money on the transfer fee as well. So three mil of our budget goes. And then um, we had a couple more bids. Ryan Barnett um, having a bid, so we rejected that. And then Jacob Mendy, an interesting bid coming for him. He won't be going anywhere. And then clubs started picking up on the fact that Nathan Lloyd isn't going to be our starting goalkeeper this season. And we had to reject bids, I think from Barnsley and Cardiff maybe. Nathan Lloyd, I know he's not going to be our number one goalkeeper this season, but he is not going anywhere as uh, Dare Healy, one of our Youth Academy graduates, we convert him to a cam. Now, uh, another bid for Ryan Barnett, again from Turkey, though. This one is quite annoying because we have about six or seven players that I'm looking to sell, whether, uh, sell or put out on loan. I have not had one realistic bid yet Um Obviously, I could just sell them to anyone, but I want to keep it real, uh, realistic. And I feel like the majority of them should stay in England. I haven't had any bids that really suit that um, suit that profile yet, which is really annoying because I need to get some of these players off of our books so then we can build up the transfer budget again. As you would have seen there, the bid for uh, Nathan Lloyd from Cardiff, of course, a, you know, a Welsh rival as well, so we are definitely not selling him. One thing that um, I forgot to mention as well, Cardiff and Swansea both in the championship this season. So you'll be seeing us face two Welsh derbies this year. Well, four, obviously, over the entire season playing home and away. Cannot wait for those ones. The big Welsh derbies. Love it. We played Newport County a couple of times uh, a couple of seasons ago in League Two. Now it will be Cardiff and Swansea visiting the race course ground this season. Cannot wait for those ones. Well, that'll be it for today's episode. Plenty of deals done, only only just over 100 grand left in the budget. Hopefully we can sell a few players and um, pick that budget up to, I think, about three or four million potentially. Um, but for now, that is the end of the episode. We've made six signings, five from the free agency market, Fodderingham, Chambers, Lowry, Fish and Vata, and then brought in Alfie Devine from Lille. Let me know in the comments, guys, are you happy with these signings? Which players do you think are going to star for me this season? And which players do you think I should look to sell? Um, obviously, we need to get rid of some of them. I've listed a few of them, but if you think I need to sell some other players as well, let me know in the comments. And then also let me know in the comments, where should we find, send our final scout? Should we send them to England, to Ireland? Uh, I think you can send them to Northern Ireland as well, or Scotland. Let me know in the comments where we should do that. And uh, yeah, we also need a backup striker as well. So if you have any suggestions, feel free. Keep the comments coming, guys, because I absolutely love getting, getting you guys interacted and involved with the series as well. I love hearing your suggestions and involving you in the videos. But yeah, massive love. Thank you so much for all the support on the series. Cannot wait for episode 42 where we crack on with the start of life in the championship. How are we going to get on? Who knows? Well, tune into episode 42 to find out, but drop a like on the video if you're enjoying it. Sub to the channel if you aren't already, and I'll catch you in episode 42 very soon.